It's day four of the 71st Cannes Film Festival, and France 24's film critic Lisa Nesselson is on the French Riviera to bring us up to date. Lisa, hello, thank you for being with us. Now, England-based Polish director Paweł Pawlikowski is competing with a film called Cold War. How do you feel about it? Well, my feelings for Cold War are very, very warm. It's definitely the best film I've seen in the competition so far. It's worth remembering that this director's previous film, Ida, uh, represented Poland and won the Best Foreign Language Oscar a few years ago. This is shot in the same square format in black and white, and it is, shot, it is set uh, a few years after World War II in Poland, starts in the Polish countryside where musicologists are collecting uh, the folk tunes of the rural people uh, to sort of uh, uh, magnify them and show uh, Polish culture to the people of Poland. And of course, they're now under a communist system and uh, they're supposed to be pride of the people and, and the workers. Uh, what happens is that the conductor of the group auditions and falls for a young woman who uh, has a certain something. She's not that great a singer. Her. She possibly uh, stabbed her own father, and she's definitely on probation, and she may or may not be desperate to, to defect to the West. Uh, it, they're star-crossed lovers. It, it covers several years, and uh, it's absolutely visually and emotionally riveting. Here's a glimpse of just how great it looks, followed by the director explaining why he decided to shoot in black and white. Two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Black and white seemed like the most honest and true colour for that period of 1950s Poland, when it was rather difficult to talk about colour because life there was pretty grey, everything was grey, there was very little contrast. It wasn't out of nostalgia, it was rather because I thought it seemed best, and perhaps it lent a kind of story-like, mythical quality to things. Now also in competition, Lisa, is the latest film from French writer-director Christophe Honoré. It's called Plaire, Aimer et Courir Vite in French, which roughly translates as seducing, loving and running fast. But the English title is Sorry Angel. What did you think? Uh, I think there's definitely room for lots more stories about the toll that AIDS took and uh, is still taking. This one is set in 1993, and it's the story of a 35-year-old writer and playwright uh, named Jacques who uh, has AIDS. He's tipped over into AIDS, and in, back in 93, the medication you could take couldn't cure you. It was a, a question of living with the inevitable. On a trip to the Brittany city of Rennes to uh, promote one of his plays, he meets 22-year-old uh, Arthur, uh, a local boy, and uh, they immediately are attracted to each other. Funnily enough, the movie that's showing in the movie theater is uh, The Piano by Jane Campion, and you may have heard her mentioned as, to date, the only woman ever to have won the top prize here. That was the film that started its career there. Anyway, uh, the the fact that there's a big age difference between them isn't a problem. The fact that uh, one lives in the country and one lives in the, the big city uh, isn't a problem either. What is a problem is that Jacques is ill, and so their romance will probably be short-lived. Um, the story is interesting to a point, but the director, for me anyway, puts way too much faith into the power of popular songs. He seems to believe that they can take the place of uh, tight screenwriting and interesting scenes. Not everyone agrees with me on that point, but uh, that's the way I tend to feel about his work. Uh, by the end of the movie, we know a fair amount about these characters, but I still didn't really want to know as much as I learned. Here is the director uh, speaking about why he thinks it's important to tell these kinds of stories. I think that AIDS was very traumatic for people who were born in the 60s and 70s. 
and that the cinema world stayed relatively quiet about this. I wouldn't say that AIDS is the main topic of the movie, but I do believe that it's entirely normal that this historical fact that was so important for people of my generation should feature in the storylines of many films. And of course, those two films are competing for the top prize, the Palme d'Or. Uh, but there are several other sections of the festival, such as International Critics Week, where you saw a French film also about same-sex love called Sauvage. Tell us more. That's right. Uh, unlike uh, the, the previous film we spoke about, uh, this one uh, really touched me, really moved me. It's uh, about a 22-year-old male prostitute. Uh, his name is Leo, and he has no fixed address, uh, and he only seems to own the clothes on his back, and he absolutely lives in the moment. He hustles for just enough money to get by. When he's hungry, he steals food from a fruit stand. When he's thirsty, he drinks water from the gutter, and uh, he doesn't seem to mind uh, the, the state of his life or have any plans to improve it. He's just kind of uh, sweet and will service men who are much older or disabled. So he's very generous. He happens to have a crush on a fellow hustler who says he isn't actually gay. He's just doing this to get by and Leo doesn't know what to do with his feelings for his unattainable buddy. Uh, it's sometimes hard to watch because some people are uh, kind and others are not but it's very, very affecting and and a, a, a dynamite first film. Well, that's a wrap for day four. Lisa Nesselson, thank you very much.